Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in C Sharp. And today we're going to be learning about constants, strings, uh, some string functions, and formatting numbers. So let's get started. So as you can see, all I have here is a enter button called btn enter, and the text is just enter. And I have a little invisible uh, misplaced label output with no default text. So that's it. So let's learn about constants. So I'll double click this. Now, what are constants? Well, constants um, are tip. Well, I'll get to that in a moment. Constants, as opposed to variables, are values that never change during the course of your program. And because of this, we can typically declare them not inside our button click events or in our form load events. We can just declare it up here in our uh, in this subspace. Uh, in the module level. We'll learn about variable scope later in a different tutorial. But basically if you declare any variables or constants up here, it can be seen within all those that forms uh functions and, and whatnot. So and with good reason. So in order to declare a constant, just call it const and then followed by the data type. So I'll just call it an int. And let's call it I don't know tax federal is equal to, I don't know, 15.3? Oh, no, I guess I did have to make it a double. So, there you go. And when you declare constants, you typically make them all capitals. So when you use them in your click events, um, they're very visible. And another reason why you declare constants up here at the top of your program is so it's easy to justify them uh, to, yeah, to change them anytime you need to. So in case like that the federal tax goes up, you could just change it up here and every time it's used down there, it can be changed. On top of that, if I declared this constant only in this button enter event, then it could not be seen in any other areas. And I might want the tax federal to be seen everywhere else too. So that's another reason to make constants up here. But don't declare regular variables up here. You shouldn't do that. Okay, so, um, you know what? Oh yeah, so constants basically they work like variables but their values can never change is that good all right that's good you know what that 15.3 i don't really like that 15.3 it's not perfect so let me type in tax federal plus equals, let's go 0 0.7. Let's change it. Wait, wait a minute. The left hand side of an assignment must be a variable, property, or indexer. But wait, wait. Oh, that's because we made a constant. So we can't change the value of it. But if we get rid of this constant, control X. Now it does go away. Now I put it back. And there's the error again. But we're not, uh, and yeah, that's about it for constants. We're not going to really have to worry about that. But yeah, all you do is declare it like a normal variable, but with const in the front. So now we can just get rid of this, and we can be done with that. Okay, so the next thing I'd like to show you is string concatenation. And that's basically how to uh, put two or more strings together. So I'll type in a string. I'll call it, I don't know, my string. I'll set that equal to... I don't know, Adam, and let's go label output.text is equal to, and then my string, and what if I want to add something to it? Well, I could just put the plus sign for concatenation, and, oh yeah, I want to go plus and plus equals. There we go. And let's throw in a space here, because we want, or you could put a space here, but you don't want the two strings to be directly next to each other since they're separate words. So, um, oh, whoops, I put the wrong thing. About, I want hello to be right here. I want to say hello to me. Okay, there we go. So, hello, Adam. So, let's see if that works. Hello, Adam. There it is. So, it successfully concatenated these two strings. Um, now you might also um, have another problem in the future where maybe you'll have uh, a number right here for an example and this will be a number right here so let's go five I click save I run this 
I click enter. Wait a minute. This string is 4. 4 plus 5 should be 9. So what gives? Well, the reason why this is happening is because since this is a string, it's going to concatenate it with this number, which basically means put it side by side, just like normal concatenation. So if you ever try to add numbers in your program and you're getting this kind of a problem, then that's usually because um, one or more of those numbers is either a string or a character, a char in other words. Uh, so watch out for that. And another thing that you can do is type in, let's say, my string plus equals, whoops, and let's go and. So I'll click save, and let's see if that, work, that works. Let's see if the and ends up in the middle. And it does, 4 and 5. So yeah, you can concatenate this way as well if you wish. Uh, so that's about it for that. So let's uh, get rid of all this. Let's go hello world, exclamation point. And now let's learn some string functions. Okay, so the first um, function I'd like to show you is a property called length. And basically what this does is returns number of characters in string. Hope I spelled that all right. So we'll go um, my string dot then length. Now there's a bit of a problem here. Cannot implicitly convert from type int to string. Wait a minute, but what's an integer? This length, since it's returning the number of characters, it's now a number. So now we're going to have to throw the two string back there again. So now we have to put it back to a number. So uh, let's run this. So let's see how many characters are in my string. 12. Let's count this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Does a white space count? Well, let's skip it for now. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Well, I guess the white spaces do count. So there you, there you go. So that's the length. The next one I would like to show you is um, two in a row, actually. So this is the only property which does not end with two parentheses, but the rest will. So one is two upper. Whoops. So it's like that. Um, converts all characters in string to upper case. And as you could guess, I'm going to copy this, paste this, and type in to lower. To lower. There we go. So I can get rid of all this and type in to lower. Is that right? Whoops. Whoops. Dot to lower. Ah. Uh, there we go. Just a little bit. There we go. So now I'll throw in the uh, enter. And now the H and the W are now lower cased. And if I make it to upper, save, press F5, press enter. Now it's all uppercase. So that's some um, pretty basic stuff right there to, to know. And what's the next one I would like to show you? Probably a very, very important one that you'll use, whether it's in class or the real world, is the index of. And basically what the index of does is um, returns index number of first uh, appearance, or occurrence, I should use occurrence, occurrence of character or string. Okay, so that sounds really confusing, but don't fret. So first of all, what's an index number? Well, basically... Um, each of these characters is assigned an index number inside this whole string starting at zero. So basically, when we saw that the length returned 12, that means, um, that basically means in here, this h is index zero. Um, in any time, almost every time in computer science, any kind of programming language, you'll always be starting, if you're working with indices, you'll be starting with zero. So that means with 12 characters, that means we're going from zero to 
11. So this exclamation point will be index 11. So we can actually uh, try to figure that out. So inside the index of, basically what you put in there is the character that you want to look for. So you can put in a character or you can put in a string, uh, followed by and this is actually optional, this second piece of information is an optional um, starting point. So, uh, I know you can't really see see all that. There we go. So basically what we can put throw in here is index of, and let's throw in a number inside of this. Uh, I don't know if this has to be capitalized or not. Index of dot to string and okay so let's go well what character should we look for let's look for the let's look for the let's look for the h then shall we h followed by now nah, let's just go h so i go save all i press f5 and that should return index 0 which it does uh now let's go for the o there so that's 0 1 2 3 4 so, or let's just type in O. So I click save, F5. There's our four. Now, a very interesting thing you might want to know is what if it doesn't even exist? Let's put Z in. Let's see what happens if you put in Z. We get negative one. So anytime you have to create an application that has to look for something that's not there, or if it has to check to see if something's not there, have to check to see if, um, if index of of a certain character returns negative one. So, in case you're ever given a problem like that, see if it ch have it checked for negative one. That's very, very useful. Let's have it look for O starting at. Let's have it starting at five. Let's be let's be rebels here. So that's right after that first O. Now it's number seven, because that was four. But we want to start at five, six, seven. So since we're starting at the fifth, yeah. So that's where it's looking now. Um, okay, so let's go to the next one. That I'd like to show you. Replace. Basically, what that does is return um, replaces one string with another. Um, replace all occurrences of either char or string with other char or string. This is this this is a pretty s straightforward. So remember, if you're using chars, use single quotes, which is what I'm gonna do now. So I'm gonna go with uh, replace and let's go what should we do here let's replace all currencies of L with uh, I don't know G think that'll work so we have three L's let's see if all they all turn to G's oh and they do look at that all those L's turn into G's so that's what the replace does